looking at consistency in church. And wo shise dede ninu ijo. Consistency in church. Shise dede ninu ijo. We have been looking at this topic in the last three Sundays. Ati wo akori lati ose meta saying. And today we are going to end it today. Ni eni la ma lo si da ni duro lori re. I will probably make it interactive and ask one or two questions from us. One bere bere kon tabi meji ni or wa. Or if you have questions you can also ask at the end of the teaching. Seba ni bere li bere le yin ti abati koi koi. Told us three Sundays ago what consistency is all about. As of one year, some meta saying you would you see she she did it too much. Consistency in church. She she did it in no job. Consistency in church. She she did it in no job. We say what is consistency? Can she she did it? And the thing we have told us, I'll just summarize it in the next three minutes. I want you want to solve one. I want to solve this shocky one. Anyone you should do matter. Number one, we said to be consistent is to be regular and Alak constant in church attendance. Alak to be consistent is to be regular and constant in church. To be regular and constant. In church. That is not that you come today, you don't come next week Sunday. That you are ever regular and constant. That's consistency. Number two. We said to be consistent is to be available when needed. That you are ever available when you are needed by God. And we said availability propels usability. We said God does not use talent. God uses those who are available. It is not because you are talented. That's why God is using you. God is using you because you make yourself available. So, when you now make yourself available, God will not empower you with talent to accomplish the work. If you are talented and you do not make yourself available, the Lord will not use you. And we said in the realm of the spirit, availability is superior to gifting. Your gifting is very small compared to availability in the realm of the spirit. And a gifted person that is not available is a useless person for God. Unavailable gifted person is a useless person to God. Aaron can speak better than Moses. God he didn't use Aaron. God used Moses because Moses made himself available. Number three. We said to be consistent is to be devoted to the assignment of heaven. To be devoted to the heavenly assignment. When you are consistent in your devotion, God will also be consistent in your life. There are people that will need to fast and pray for God to answer their prayer. There are people they don't need to pray, they just receive answer to prayer they didn't pray for. Do you get what I'm saying? Some people need to fast and pray for God to answer their prayer. Some people do not need to pray. God just grant them an answer to prayer they didn't pray for. The difference is how devoted are you to God in service. God is not a partial God. But those who love God, God loves them. God, those who are committed to God, God is committed to them. Number four. We said to be consistent is to show up in service. To be consistent is to show up in church every service. To, to show up in church every service. Regardless of what your mood is. Or how your body is doing you. Now look at the testimony this morning. It was when the choir were singing. 
That was when my body now became better. Now, if you are the same person, will you come to church when your body is doing you? No, someone will say, It seems I want to have a day. Hello. Let me stay at home today. Hello. Now, if that is your testimony, you are an inconsistent person to God. And you will realize that even God will be inconsistent in answering your prayer. That's the way things work in the realm of the spirit. So, to be consistent is to show up in church every service irrespective of what you are feeling in your body because anything that can keep you at home happily on sunday morning can keep you strengthless in the hospital if the devil can succeed to talk to your body that ah uh -uh, want to fall now stay at home that same devil can make you to be sick and it will keep you in the hospital. Sister Tani Balesi, as she your relatives of my people, will do fair or one. Ile, Satan is not back on all. She as she your relatives, yes, Ile. But a Christian that is not sick is not because the devil doesn't want to be sick. It's because the devil does not have the power yet to make him sick. Oni ba boti o she aiso. Oni she pe Satan i o fe de ko she aiso. She must Satan i o ni agbara lati de ko she aiso. But the moment the devil can keep your mind to stay, I want to stay at home on Sunday morning and sleep. That same devil has succeeded in keeping you to be sick. I will say to obey your mood is to obey the devil. You know, your body can actually talk to you. You wake up in the morning on Sunday morning and the body is say, ah, well, you, you went last week Sunday now. Why don't you sleep? You will go next week Sunday. It, 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 the devil talks to everybody like that. Whether you are an ordinary member, whether you are a bishop, you are pastor, the devil talk to your body that why don't you sleep this morning? But to obey your mood is to obey the devil. So you must obey your mood. If you obey your mood, you obey the devil. If you obey your mood, you obey the devil. If you obey your mood, you obey the devil. If you obey your mood, you obey the devil. If you obey your mood, you obey the devil. If you obey your mood, your mood is to obey the devil. If you obey your mood, you obey the devil. If you obey the devil, is to beyond that terrible attack. So those are the things that we said on the first Sunday. Last week Sunday, we talked about why must we be consistent in church? Why, why must we be consistent in church? Number one, we said because God build his church specifically for you. It is because of you he build his church. Because it is his church. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail against me. So when he said the gate of hell will not prevail against it, he's talking about you. That the gate of hell will not prevail against you. And number two, we said you must be in church consistently because God commanded it. It's a commandment of God. To be in church regularly. Especially once in a week. On a Sunday service like this. On a Sunday service like this. That nothing can keep you at home on Sunday morning. Not your head. Not your body. Not money. How many of you know that there is no business that can keep a, the other religion? from uh, observing their own prayer in the time of prayer. When it is one o'clock or is it two o'clock and you want to buy good, when it is that, they will keep you waiting. They will go and do the prayer and come back to you. Because it is the commandment of God to be in church regularly. And number three, we said because it's a place of teaching and knowledge. It's a place of teaching and knowledge. Because it is when you go to church regularly, especially on Sunday, that's when you, you learn some things. That's where you learn how your life will be on Sunday or on the next Sunday. There are things you will learn on Sunday that can help you throughout the week. Because the Bible says my people are perished for lack of knowledge. When you are 
consistently absent on Sunday service, you are reducing your knowledge on a consistent basis. When there is a reason that will keep you out of church on Sunday, there will be a reason why you are diminishing in knowledge consistently. And a man has stopped learning, is a man that starts dying. Because we must learn till we die. I was telling some people last week. I said I was going to Lagos. And I said I don't want to go by flight. I said I want to go by road. And so they shouted out ah, 13 hours, 14 hours. That's too much. And I said the reason I wanted to go by road. Is because I needed 12 hours to myself where I can reach for 12 hours. And so my staff said, but we will call you now, we will see call you. I say, when I'm on the road, the network will not be as when I'm in Abuja. So there will be a time you want to call me, you will not reach me. So because I needed 12 hours to read, I said, I will not be able to read for the whole day. I decided that I will not be able to read for the whole day. I decided to go to Lagos by road. I decided to go to Lagos by road. Because knowledge is very vital. The level you are now is not Nigeria economy. It is not. See, they are going to. They, they want to do demonstration, Abi, or strike from Thursday, Abi. I can, I can tell you that everybody pass through this difficult situation. It is not because of Nigeria economy. To move from one level of life to another higher level of life, what you need is knowledge, no money. It's knowledge. And most often than not, on Sunday service, that's where you get knowledge to build your life up. When they said Nigeria Jagazaga, how many years? It was Obasanjo that was Nigerian president. That's over 20 years ago. So it is not this year that the country is like this. Even listening to King Sebinisa Obe Sandy Ade song in 1970 something, they have been singing that Nigeria, 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 Ima Dero. Thank you, man. 1970 something people were still complaining that things were not moving well. You know, 1970 something when you also pay a call, or they buy you will hear kill at the man. Shaye is your 1970 something. Oh, people are looking for money to buy 1000 era vehicle. And when you want to get it, I learned that the money to buy bread now was the money to buy that soon in those days. Vehicle, what you have been ready by you when you have been around corner. You're just um, musicians were singing that. Oh, I want to go. Oh, oh, Sinita, 1970 something. But when you have knowledge, no matter how tough things are, your knowledge will make you to be out of that difficulties. And you get that knowledge when you come fellowshipping with God. Number four. We're talking about why we must be consistent in church. Because it is a place of gift development. That's where you develop your gift. Everybody in church, we are all gifted. There is no one without gifts. If you can't sing, you can dance. If you can dance, you can talk. It's a gift. If you can talk, even to stand as an usher is a gift. Some people cannot stand more than 10 minutes. To greet people very well and smile is a gift. Some people is difficult. They will, they will frown their eyes. It's not because they are angry with you. That's the way they were fashioned. To just frown their face. And you see some people, if we are one million here, they will smile, they will give them easy gifts. But you develop the gift in church. And you are not going to be able to do it. Because the way gift works is you don't develop your gift alone. You develop your gift when you are in the midst of gifted people. So in church, 
you develop your gift. When you come to church consistently. Number five. We said because it's a place for spiritual connectivity. It's a place for spiritual connectivity. There is no one that can develop spiritually at home. Alone. Because you need to connect with spiritual people for your spirit to develop. No matter, no matter the sermon you listen to on Facebook, you need to connect with people. There's what we call assimilation. Me entering the house of God, you connect something in your life. So it's a place for spiritual connectivity. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, verse 17, it says, Iron sharpness. It is in church that you that you are. Connected spiritually, here you met another person, you connect your spirit together and you develop. And so, a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. It is in church that that comes about. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, the Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, companion of fools. They shall be destroyed. So it's a place for spiritual connectivity. And I told us last week, I said, for since I was born. I've never been at home on the Sunday service. Imagine almost 15, now almost 50 years. Every Sunday. It's not possible. I will not be at home on Sunday to do what it's not possible. That's why I cannot be sick. Why? Because God wants me to be in church. When you go to church regularly and God sees you like that, He takes it that that's your responsibility and He keeps you alive to witness it. Number six. Number six. We said one of the reasons again to be in church consistently is to fulfill the great commission of discipleship. Yes, to fulfill the commandment of Jesus of building disciples. Because you are supposed to be disciples till you die. And continue to follow Christ till you die. This is what people don't know. This world is being controlled by the devil. You either belong to that devil and he will give you the thing that he owns. Or you belong to God. Then you become the enemy of the devil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, is that you are in the secret court? And they empower you. And then you can be successful in their own way in the world. Or you are in the secret place. And you are empowered by God. But if you are a a child of God. You are not in the secret court. And you are not in the secret place. You are inconsistent in serving God. Inconsistent in coming to church. That's why you see some Christians will say, and I serve God, oh, and I, I go to church, oh, and I'm a believer. Oh. Why are this happening to me? Because you are not in the secret court. Where they can empower you. You are not in the secret place. Where God can empower you. You are in the middle. God is fighting you. The devil is fighting you. He didn't need death. Mario, Nick, but to my nickname, more than see on loan. Oh, she won't. Oh, see, he be coco. Oh, see, he be a bell coco. Satan in bed. You are not with God. You don't need to go to the secret court before the devil will take you as a child. So, you need one, but you're basic. Well, you're alone. Oh, you know, that's a loss. See, a bell coco. Kiss at any top five. Get a bill more. And they begin to torment people. That's why consistency in church make you either dwell in the secret place of the most high. Psalm 90 shall abide under the shadow of the Lord. And that brought about by consistency in church. Today, before we, I will ask us questions, then we can ask questions. I want us to look at few people that are consistent in church in the Bible. Those who were consistent in the church in the scripture. Number one, 
those who are talking about those who are consistent in going to church, in staying in the church. And in so Number one, prophetess Anna. Prophetess Anna. This Anna, Anna. This Anna is A W N A. A W N A. Anna. Prophetess Anna. This woman was going to church regularly. And it got to a stage that she decided that she wanted to be in church forever. And the Bible recalls that among the people that God allowed to see the birth of Jesus before they die was this same woman. So in Luke chapter 2, if you look at verse 36, and verse 37. You can look at this on the screen. The Bible says there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age. She has lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Now, if you go to verse 37, the Bible says and she was a widow for about 84 years. Her husband has died. And she was here alive for 84 years after her husband died. So this woman was over 100 years. She was a widow for 84 years. And she decided not to depart from the temple. I want to be in the church now till I will see the glory of God and go to heaven. And she kept serving God with fasting and with prayer night and day. In the church. The Bible recorded that the time she died was the time she saw the birth of Jesus. So the glory she wanted to see, she saw the glory before she died. Only few people saw that. But by her consistency in church, she saw that glory. That is that God wants to show you that it is when you are in the midst of people that God showed it to you. Number two, King David. Yes, King David. King David was the most consistent king in the Bible in terms of serving God. If you go to Psalm 26, verse 18, Ogbon. Psalm 26. Let's look at verse 8 in NIV. Esekejo. Psalm 26, verse 8 in NIV. Look at it. David was talking there. He said, I love the house where you live. He's talking to God. Oh Lord, the place where your glory dwells. I just love it. Mo he was fe. talking. I just want to be in the presence of God. I just want to be in the house of God. There are some people in this church. When there is public holiday, and they will not go to the office on that day. They will come to the church with mat, with bed. They will just be in the church. Right Meanwhile, some people, when there's opportunity not to go to the office, they will look for where to hang out, friends, go and drink, go and party. King David said, I just want to be in the house of God. In Psalm 27 verse 4, he said, only one thing I desire and this thing I will seek after it that I may do it that's what that's his desire he said my desire in life is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the, in the temple of God one thing that for someone to say my desire is to just be in church my desire is to just be in church that's David talking like that. There was a time when I newly moved to Lube. From my house to the church was almost one and a half hours. Every day. I live in Lube here. And it's not Lube Federal House. I, I, I still live back, 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 at the back, at the back of the estate. And my church was in Kuba. Kuba going to BIG area in Kuba. Kuba. And I will go to Wednesday service. I will go to choir Riaza on Saturday. And I will be in church on Sunday. If I usually do a program every Saturday, we call it uh, deliverance service, I must be there 4 o'clock on Saturday. So, look at a man that is living, living in Lube. 
And he will take him like one and a half hours to get to church. And he will be in church on Wednesday. And he will be in church on Friday. He will be in church on Saturday. And he will be in church on Sunday. Four times in a week. With the kind of work I do, if I do not love God, I won't be able to do that. But because when you love God, God loves you. Anything you do for God, God is writing it down for you. Now, the day you will see the benefit, it may not be today that you are doing it. It's writing it somewhere down for you, the thing that you are doing. Everything. King David said, one thing I desire is to just be in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. If you look at Psalm 65 verse 4. Psalm 65 verse 4. The same David said, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy court, to dwell in the house of God, we shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. That are goodness in the house of God when you go there consistently. I want you to hear this message for you to understand that nothing must keep you out of church on Sunday. The moment your mind is telling you that this Sunday I want to stay at home, know that it was the devil attack. The moment devil wants to attack a man, the first thing he will do is to take you away from the church. When Peter was put in the prison, the Bible said that the church gathered together and they were praying for Peter. There is what we call corporate prayer. You can pray for yourself. But when you are in the midst of people where they pray, is another level of results. And so, the devil's plan is to keep you away from that atmosphere. So that he can attack you. So that he can attack you. If you look at Psalm 84, verse 2, and verse 4, Psalm 84, verse 2, he said, My soul longed, yea, even fainted for the call. He said, I, I would die if I do not find myself in the church. That's the reason. He said, I'm, I'm just dying to just be in the church. For me to just be with the living God. If you go to verse 4 of it, Psalm 84, verse 4. Let's look at verse 4. Psalm 84, verse 4. Yes. That dwell in thy house. Those that dwell in your house, they are blessed. They will be still praising thee. It's okay. David understand that the reason he's saying I want to be in the house of God, I want to because he knows that there are blessings in doing that. Oh, that feed him on with me. If you go on, you know, we want to draw along. Blessed are they that dwell in your house. That dwell in your house. That's why in Psalm 122, he said, I am glad. Anytime they tell me there is service, he said, I'm glad. Psalm 122, <inaudible> verse 1. He said, I am so, I am glad when they said to me there is service. <inaudible> yes. When they said unto me, when they said to me, let us go into the let house. Let us of the Lord. go to the house. That's David. He said, I was glad. When they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad. And and that's why the tomorrow the greatest king in Israel is King David. The greatest king, the greatest king in Israel is King David. It's King David. Till today, the head of Israel is from the tribe of David. Because he knows how to be in the house of God. And he received the blessing of being in the house of God. I want to look at what God said about him. For being a consistent dweller in the house of God. If you look at Psalm 89. Now we're going to, we're going to look at all, almost all the verses. We look at verse 20. We look at verse 27. Verse 29. And then verse 33 to 35. Psalm 89 verse 20. Yes. I have found David my servant. God is saying I have found David. He's my servant. With my holy oil. Yes. Have I anointed 
Imagine God is saying, This David, oh, I have found him. He is my servant. I have anointed him. Verse 27. Also, I will make him my firstborn. Yes. Higher than the kings of the earth. God is saying, This David, oh, I will make him higher than the anointed him now in Israel. There was a time they celebrated 3,000 years of the reign of King David in Israel. In this, in this century, not quite long. He's not the only king in Israel, Paul. Oh, in Israel. Call him up, but Israel. Like not, not quite long. They celebrated the 3,000 years he has been the king in like Israel. Be, and there are so many kings in Israel that they are forgotten. They didn't forget him because he knows how to serve God, go to the house of the Lord, and God has blessed him. Oh, but be, let's go to verse 29 of that Psalm 89. He said, not only him, even his children, they were endure forever. Forever. And, and his throne, throne as the yes. of heaven. His throne is still reigning up to now. Because the head right? of Israel is from the tribe of this same David. There is a way you will serve God that even your children that are yet to be given back to, they will benefit from it. I thought that was a, a, a story. When I was to apply for, for work, jam. I remember I was to go and submit the form. submit form no. I didn't know that it has closed. I think it was why why at Ogba in Lagos, Ogba Ogba Apostle. I went there to submit and I saw crowd. They said it has closed. And I discovered that the police they were driving people away that the form has closed. And why people were, were scrabbling and begging to submit the form, one of the policemen just pointed at me and said, You enter. I thought I have offended someone. And so he said, Yeah, you just go, go to that office and go and submit your form. I was I was thinking, what happened? And I was so told that you can see me in the midst of crowd. And I said I was told, so I don't know where the interpretation is coming from. But you know, by the time I submitted the form and I was coming by the man now stopped me. Nick, but you won't submit from not to one part out. I said, do you know the reason I, I asked you to enter? I saw your face. And this face, I can't miss it. So I, did, I know that you belong to social family. He said, is that correct? I said, you are correct, sir. He said, your father has done this, has done this, has done this, has done this. For my family. My father go to churches up and everywhere and help people. Every since the service here, he will be there. The service there and he will help people. So I had to call my father after that. My father said on one Sunday he just he just gathered eight children in the church and took them to embassy and collected American visa for all of them and sent them. He didn't know. Any one of them till tomorrow. Eight people. Baba, America visa. Joko. Pay for their ticket. Send them to America. That was it. Maybe someone will receive his own visa this year by the grace of God. Amen. And so look at how I submitted that form by what someone has done. So there is a no. way you will serve God that is your children that will benefit from it. So God was saying that even the children of David, they will see the benefit benefiting from what David has done. Look at verse 33 to 35. Psalm 39. Psalm 33. Nevertheless, Will I not he said to him, this David, though, my loving kindness, I will not take it from him. Nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Yes, 34. My covenant will I not break. He said, even my covenant with David, I will not break it. No, alter the thing that is God He said, the thing that come out of my mouth, I will still fulfill it for him. 35. What have I sworn by my holiness? Said, I have sworn by my holiness. That I will not lie unto David. This David, though. I will not lie to him. That everything I have said, it will come to pass. Oh, but, 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 See, if you, you will serve see, God like that, that's the same benefit you will receive. I was a choir master. And we just did choir fiesta for the first time in that church. And everybody was so happy. And the church was growing because of that. And a month after, my office called me. And said they are sending me to Ghana. I'll be working in Ghana. 
They will be paying me salary in dollars. And when I calculated the dollar to Naira, it was like times three times four of my salary in Nigeria. I was just an ordinary member in the church. Just choir master. I wasn't even a pastor. But I look at it. If I go to Ghana, more money for me. But what will I do with this choir? We just did choir fiesta. And everybody was so happy. If I leave them now, what will become of them? Now, what people don't know as I'm thinking God is looking at me. Some of you, even if it's only 20,000 naira that they will have to your salary that will take you from the choir. You will not even tell choir master. You will be calling choir master. I'm in Lagos now. But God is looking at it. I went back to my MD and I recommended another person to go to that guy. And the salary of that person would be more than my own salary. It doesn't matter. My mind was just I can't leave this choir. I'm talking about 18 years ago. Now, fast track it back now. The person that went to Ghana and myself, we can't be in the same level. If after a while they close down the Ghana, Ghana office, the person in Ghana could not come back to resume in Nigeria. That was how he lost a job. And I became a GM in the office. I resigned, I started my own. Of course, if you just see, one see, see one. how God has helped me because I put his own course first. Before I will be my own I'm telling you, your, your, you alone cannot make yourself successful. When you are lining it to God, say, God, it is just you I want to serve. See whether you will suffer me. God will not suffer you. I was talking to Boratai yesterday. I went for a meeting in Lagos on Friday. Friday. After the meeting, and I said to myself, How did I find myself here? I know that by my qualification, by my knowledge, I was not I was not qualified at all to be in that place. After I left the place and I went for another meeting, I was telling them that I went for a meeting somewhere. They say, How did you know there? How did you get there? How high powered office? When you serve God, He opened doors for you. Now, everybody is serving God, but I'm talking about consistency in serving God. That you are in the church today. Everybody here can say that you'll be in church next week. Sometimes. That till December, everybody can say this one. You will always fear seeing him in church. Then you begin to see how God will be planning your life for you. But the moment when you don't even come, people don't even know that you are not there. Then something is wrong. The same way people do not know that you are not there, even God does not know that you are not there. For God not to know that you are not there is calamity. For that's why consistency has helped King David to the level before he died. Even when he died, even go to Jeremiah 33. Look at what was said again concerning David. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 to 22. Just hear the Lord. Jeremiah 33, verse 20, 21, 22. Just hear the Lord. If you can break my covenant of the day, and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season. He said, Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levite, the priest, and my minister. And he said that if the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant. Why? Because of just serving God. Serving God consistently. Serving God consistently. In 2 Samuel 24, 24. 
David did Ezekiel something that God said, I will never forget you. That's what God is expecting from you. And the king said, that's King Sebi, said to Aaron, Nay, I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offering unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So David bought the dressed floor and the oven for 50 shekels of silver. What happened? He wanted to present an offering to the Lord. And so, where he wanted to get the offering, they gave it to him free of charge. You know, say, if I'm the one that needs it, I will collect it from you free of charge. He said, but I want to offer it to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. He said, I must feel the pain that it cost me something. Even when they didn't want to collect money from me for that thing he wants to give to God, he paid them so that he can. Cost him that I give this to God out of my sweat. Yesterday, when I was on Friday, when I was driving from Soka Okada Park to this place, and I look at the road, and I say, ah, God, I wish I have like two million naira. And I said, that two million naira, I will just do that with myself. I'm sure you know from Okada Park, from that Okada Park, coming now till you get to Meagwa, you know that road is very bad. When rain is falling, it becomes terrible. If I'm coming from town now, I want to come to the church, I will go and pass through the SD, I will not pass through that place again. Because of... now, so imagine I was thinking that if I just have two million naira, I will just fix the road. Who do you think I want to fix the road for? For the people of God that want to come to church. As I'm thinking, God will be looking at it. Eh, so this person wants to have two million naira and he's not thinking about spending a million for his family. He's talking about building room for people to come to church. So if God look at the way you think and you think like that for him, for his glory, he will keep providing for you. I just believe people that are coming with their vehicle on that road. How could people drive? Especially those who are not driving with Jeep and the rest. That was what David did. And God blessed it. He was so consistent in serving God. Number three. Before we close, we are looking at those who are consistent in the church in the bible and to the apostle of jesus and the apostle of jesus in luke 24 anyway luke or chapter 24 verse 52 and 53 and they worship him and return to jerusalem with great joy in verse 53 the bible said they now continue in the temple on a daily basis, they continue in the temple. They were just there. They just want the glory of God because God has promised them something. And so they stayed in the temple day and night. If you go to Acts chapter 2 and they continue to Acts chapter 2 verse 46, verse 47. Acts of the Apostle chapter 2 46 and 47. Said, they continue daily with one accord in the temple. They started from that Luke 24 and they continue to the act of they continue daily in the temple breaking bread, helping themselves, providing food for themselves, eating. When someone has two bread, they bring it to the church. They all eat together. They were in the they just want to see God all the time. That's the joy of coming to church regularly. And the Bible says God kept adding to them, he, he kept favoring them because they are in the temple. They kept receiving favor. And that's what you will receive when you are ever consistent in church. This topic that we are teaching us this month, I'm telling you, it's more than when someone lay hands on you and pray for you. God is looking for those who are consistent in serving Him. Because you want to bless them. And finally, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's number four, Jesus Christ. Jesus. In Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Anyway, Luke 4, 16. 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 The Bible says, and he came to Nazareth, where they had been brought up. And as his custom was, as he, as he does consistently, as he does every day, he went to the temple, he went to the house of God, he went to the synagogue. 
so that he can read the word of God to them, so that he can teach the word of God and also learn the word as he was doing it consistently as his customs was. Yoruba so ke bi o asare se ma nri bi se re se ma nri bo se ma se lojojumo he goes to the temple every day that's our lord jesus christ o lo si temple ni gbogbo igba jesus oluwa no wonder act of the apostle 1038 say that god anointed him abajo god anointed him with only ghost and with power and then he went about healing people those who are oppressed of the devil because god is in lord ka kiri lati lo wa awon eniyan so god is always with him. As I close now. Why do you think many people not to be consistent in church? Why do you think that people will be in church this Sunday and then the next Sunday will come will be another, another maybe four Sundays? Number one. They don't love God. They don't love God. When you see a boy who loves a girl even when the parents are saying Timba to Uri and Nia to go in, he will wait for the parents to sleep and quickly open the door and see go. That's what they call love. That's love. Well, before I married my wife, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. My family, like I, I, used, I used to say, my family, we are Chelsea and my sister United put together. That's my family. So when we wake up in the morning, you will see Chelsea and Manchester United team all together in the palace. We're so, we so, we are so, we are so large in my family. All of them say, didn't support me to marry my wife. Oh, for what sake? I said, I don't disagree with anybody in this family. What? I said, I don't disagree. I've never disagreed with them. Sir. But on this one, she won't I will marry her. In fact, I said, I will just go to court. And I will collect certificates. He's married. My wife family. They said, no, 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 don't go to Ondo. They will not accept. When my wife was walking, they said, that man you want to marry, where is walking? They are enemy to us, so you can't marry in that place. She too, love is affecting her head. She said, well, I will just resign from your office. This is the person I want to marry. If you are not like that to God, you don't love God. And the sign that you are, you love God like that is you are always in the church. If there's something we want to do in church, can you be the one people will call and say, Where are you? Can you just go to church for us? Can you be that person? If you are not that person, you need to increase your love for God. You need to increase your love for God. You need to increase your love for God. You must make yourself available for church anytime. Anytime, anytime I want to just be in church. It's a sign that you love God. In John 14 31, Jesus said, I obey God because I love Him. I obey him because I love him. And one of God's obedient uh, commandments is for you to be in church regularly. Number two reason why people are inconsistent in church is because their understanding of the church is association instead of impartation. Yes, the moment your understanding of going to church is association and not impartation, you will be inconsistent. No, the moment there is another association on Sunday morning that will give you money, you will go to that place. You will not come to church. That's why you see some people will say, we, we, are, we are Agba family or we are Isanlu, Isanlu Association. They have a meeting on Sunday and it's 10 o'clock. But it's once in three months anyway, so let me just go this one, then I can go to church next week. So if you are like that, it's because you take church as association, not an impartation. So by the number three, which is our final word. Because people don't know the blessing 
in going to church consistently. In Psalm 84 verse 7, the Bible says they go from strength to strength as they appear in church. Strength. As they go to church regularly, they receive strength. I said, and they will continue to grow stronger, each one of them, as they appear before God in church in Jerusalem. So, so the question is when you don't go to church regularly, what do you think is responsible? Or when you are at home on Sunday on Sunday, how do you feel? That's my question too. And then I'll be able to ask questions for five minutes and then we'll answer it.